Balenciaga has been quite the hot topic for some time now, and every time I see people talking about it, it's always so polarizing. Some people love it and think Demna is a genius self-aware designer, and some people hate it and think Demna is a disgrace to the OG Cristobal Balenciaga himself. Oh, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the and I think that's a good thing. I think the best art is one that is polarizing. To me, love and hate come from the same place of passion, and the opposite of that is indifference, which is what you don't want. You don't want people to look at your art and feel nothing. Or maybe you do, and in that case, good luck with the rest of your career. But that's a lot of what huge fashion houses give me. Indifference. Gucci, Louis, Prada, Dior. I don't even know that much about these houses because I kind of don't care. Balenciaga is the only big luxury fashion label that I care about today. Although I'm starting to become disenchanted with it. And I think that's because of the fact that Balenciaga is a profit-driven, high fashion brand owned by Caring. Which really makes it no difference to any of its competitors. Everything I liked about Balenciaga was because of the seemingly unique perspective of its creative director. Demna. He stands out in the current landscape of fashion, and I think that's because he's the biggest hypocrite of them all. Bold statement, very bold. But first, before I talk about Demna, we need some context. What is the current state of the fashion industry today? From my perspective, a complete outsider. And how does Demna fit into that? Well, before that, let's look at the current state of the world. That's right, we have to go even bigger. In the Western world, where these fashion conglomerates reside, capitalism is at its peak, which means rampant consumerism and exploitation of the working class. You know how back in the 90s, a band like Nirvana was extremely popular and appealing to the rebellious youth? Because they were authentic and they weren't sellouts. They weren't interested in making fast money, they put a goddamn baby dig on their album cover, they, they were all about the message. That mindset of Nirvana kind of doesn't exist anymore to me. Everyone is a sellout and everyone else is okay with it. Every podcast you listen to has three sponsors trying to sell you ball trimmers and ways to set up websites to sell more ball trimmers. Influencers are ad machines that do anything for attention and money, and this mindset is reflected in the audience as well. People want to buy lots of stuff and don't care to look too much into where it's coming from. Amazon is a black hole, but hey, one, one day delivery. What is called high culture is also starting to fall apart. And these fashion houses, which were all a part of high culture and supposedly are high culture today, have changed their values and don't deserve to be called high culture anymore. Look at fashion today. Why don't these big brands hire the Margiela's, the Alexander McQueen's, John Galliano's like they used to? John Galliano Dior was an amazing creative display of fashion. Margiela at Hermes was the only time I cared for Hermes, and same for when McQueen was at Givenchy. Today the industry hires people like Kim Jones and Virgil Abloh. Absolute money makers. Louis Vuitton saw how successful the Supreme Collab was and thought that's the way forward. And Louis Vuitton is pretty much the biggest and most profitable high fashion brand, so what they do, others will follow. This will sound gatekeepy, but stay with me. The so-called democratization of fashion, to me, isn't a good thing. Because what it pretty much means is diluting high fashion. Which means diluting the identity of everybody who's associated with it and wants to be a part of it. I think everybody should be welcomed into any subculture if they have the right intentions, put in the work of learning about it, and having it be a part of their identity. The culture shouldn't have to become easier for more people to understand and get into, because that's when you start to lose what makes it special. The authentic appeal gets lost to the people that really care about it. But there is more money to be made from the fact that there are more people who know about it and want to be a part of it rather than actually just be a part of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so when it comes to fashion, I see these fashion houses and their hundreds of collaborations and seven shows a year also vapid and destructive, especially to the environment and people's identities and sense of value in fashion. Because it is the biggest fashion houses that are doing it. Nowadays, high fashion is any piece of clothing that is very expensive. Nothing to do with artistry anymore. I'm not at all saying all fashion is like this, but it's the public's perception of luxury fashion that is like this. Most people don't know about Craig Green or Yoji Yamamoto. In the 90s, high fashion was super exclusive and exciting and bigger than life. And while they still wanted to make money, it seems like the focus was on the clothes being made and not just the money. I wasn't alive during that time, but I've seen the documentaries and read accounts and articles and it just seems like such a better time for fashion. Now it's become a perpetual system of putting out low effort, boring and accessible design and advertising it as much as possible, which is pretty much selling out to increase profit margins. And that system is sort of present in every industry nowadays. And a lot of people, including me, feel a little hopeless about it and feel like that's just the way it is. We really can't do anything about it. Okay, long pseudo intellectual rant over. I know nothing. But how does Debna fit into that system? How does he want to take on fashion and the world in the state that it's in? Let's look at where he came from. A Georgian immigrant, studied at Antwerp, a very creative avant-garde fashion school. And he climbed the industry by himself with the excellently designed garments that his brand put out. And now, Balenciaga. I'm, I'm kidding, you, you didn't think I was just going to skip his whole brand, huh? Let's, let's have a look. He started Vetement as a collective with his friends at Antwerp with the aim of making contemporary clothing that he didn't see in the world around him. And I think that Vetement has a lot of influences, but a big one definitely comes from this new postmodern view of the world when it comes to the inevitability and end the cycle of capitalism. You know how everyone jokes about how bad capitalism is, but you can't really do anything about it, but be ironic. It's this huge societal issue that most people just think is beyond their control, so why not be deprecating about it in a humorous way? Which, sure, you know, make your jokes. I'm all for some goofs and gaffs. But in general, I found that I don't really like this mentality, because it just kind of ignores the problem and replaces the possibility for solutions 
with supposedly self-aware jokes. I think majority of people have this mentality that they can't do anything about it, rather than the mentality of I can contribute to helping in some way. Be it small or big, I can do something about it. I can have an effect. It could be a stretch, but I do generally see a sense of hopelessness about the whole thing and the fate of the world. <laughs> Damna took that mentality and made it a brand. And obviously people were like, yeah, capitalism sucks, right? I love it. Vetsmo has always been an acknowledgement and a reflection of that current mentality. Not a reaction to it, a reflection, I think. And a reflection means it's an exact copy of that harmful mentality. Maybe I'm looking too deeply into it and people liked Vitamor because it was different for its time. And to that I disagree, because I think there's a subconscious reason to everything everyone does and likes. If Vitamor didn't have this ironic messaging in their clothing, people would have just thought it was terrible, which is why it generated a lot of buzz from non-fashion people who thought it was terrible and a joke, which yeah, it was it was a joke, but it depended on which side of the joke that you were on. Along with the irony lace graphics and pieces, another big aspect of Vitamor clothing was using everyday clothes that normal people wore and making them high fashion by altering things like sizing and cuts and then overcharging for them. If that isn't ironic, then I don't know what is. Paying a lot of money to look like you don't know how to dress like a normal person. The brand literally means clothes in French clothes. The brand to me is a pretentious inside joke and that pretentiousness is very present in high fashion as a whole which is why I feel like Vitamo worked. It fed into the ego of everyone who knew what Vitamo was all about, a big inside ironic fashion joke. That doesn't mean that the brand didn't have any cool designs or ideas, it did, but my point against him is not because of his design but rather his messaging, which to me is equally important in a brand. And without the joke, what is Vitamont but an extremely overpriced brand of mostly everyday clothes styled in a new subversive way? I was also into my irony at one point, but I'm tired of being nihilistic about the fate of the world and this outlook that we're fucked, might as well be consumed in it. I miss sincerity and genuineness in fashion, and I feel like Demna has further pushed the mentality of fashion consumers towards this nihilistic path where the clothes you buy really mean nothing and fashion is all based on hype. He also helped normalize the idea of overpaying for low quality. I'm not saying your clothes need to be the price of fast fashion, but $1,000 for a hoodie? Are, are you serious? This is all my speculation, but you know how everyone's saying the actual quality of high fashion items are really bad, except for like Hermes? Maybe it has to do with the success of brands like Off-White and Vitsmall selling simple, cheaply made items for so much and getting away with it. And then maybe the rest of high fashion followed that. Virgil Abloh was like this as well, where the price of the clothes he makes are super expensive because he wants to be taken seriously by the high fashion industry. Meanwhile, he tells people that you can also be a part of Off-White, even if you can't afford it by encouraging people to go and screen print their own t-shirts. And you can do that, but you'll never really be a part of Off-White because that's not what Off-White or Vitamont is trying to be. It wants to be taken seriously as high fashion. By taking these more accessible pieces of clothing and overcharging for it, are you really appreciating and uplifting the cultures you're taking it from? Or are you just taking and profiting from them while being exclusive and then pretending it's not. High fashion is still exclusive, but not to the people who are willing to learn about it and enjoy fashion. It's exclusive to the people who have money. These designers don't feel authentic coming into fashion and then they go off to work for even bigger brands. It shouldn't have been a surprise that that's what they wanted all along. It feels like these designers just wanted to be accepted by high fashion and then they convinced them by showing how much money they could make. And so big companies want more money and they want designers like them that are more business-minded marketers and not true artists. The spring summer 17 Vetsmo collection was made up entirely of collaborations. The brand, didn't make any of the clothing themselves. I understand that fashion and business is sort of one, but guess what? Every art form is business orientated and it's the worst thing about art. That includes film, music, and fashion. And I think big business has just ingrained in us that money is the most important thing, more important than good, meaningful art. Because remember how I mentioned Nirvana not being sellouts? As I said, that doesn't exist anymore. Everyone's a sellout and everyone else is okay with it. Because, you know, get that bag, sis. Make that $100 while the company you sold out to makes thousands. I saw this video of this lady bashing Balenciaga's designs. Meanwhile, midway through the video, she says this. Also, don't think for a second that I'm a Balenciaga hater. Because I'm not a Balenciaga hater. Would never do that. Because you know what? If they come to your girl with the sponsorship, I'm not saying no. <laughs> money is a powerful drug. And look, obviously that's a whole nuanced topic of its own. People need money to live. I get it. I'm not saying you shouldn't make any money of the art that you create, but I think there's a difference between doing that and being a sellout. <sighs> so now let's talk about Balenciaga. One thing to Vetement's credit is that they did the whole irony capitalism bad thing first, and they were also independent. This wasn't a manufactured thing to make money by big fashion. It was the output of younger fashion students that wanted to reflect their views. Again, just to stress, reflect their views, which was, this is wrong, fuck it though, right? Might as well get our share. Instead of, this is wrong, let's show how much we hate it and want it to change for the better, or whatever other message they could have had. So I guess Demna wanted to remove any authenticity there was with this project and go work for caring. And I know in the industry, this is like a big move for a designer now. Rather than work on your own label and establish your own thing, like, you know, Raph Simmons, Helmut Lang, Comte des Garçons, Undercover, you'll probably be paid and more known if you work in design for an already established wealthy brand, aka 
selling out. I'd rather see designers start their own brand and maintain it so that there's more competition against the bigger brands. I don't like how these big brands poach talent and make it seem like you should be thankful. You get to be creative director of Balenciaga. You get to design for us and make us rich. Sounds ideal. And look, it's not like they hire anybody. You'll notice most creative directors already have their own brands and then they go on to run another fashion house after they've proven themselves. So you have your own thing. Why go run someone else's crap and diminish your own project? Maybe I don't understand. If it's just for the status and money, then fuck that. It feels like brainwashing that you'd give up your own brand to work for someone else. Anyway, Demna said that he had achieved everything he wanted to do at Vitsmont. In five years, he achieved everything he had planned with this collective, apparently. With his friends that he was supposed to be the head of. That should tell you all you need to know. He said he wanted to change fashion because he was bored with it. I think that takes a bit more perseverance. I think all you did was establish a new angle to make money and prove that you can make money to the industry that you want to be a part of so bad. Maybe he thought he would have more influence at Balenciaga and be more impactful. And I can see that perspective, but I think it would have been for the better to stay and grow Vizmon even more. This video was never really about Balenciaga. It was about Demna, his rise and influence. Everything I said about Vizmon goes for Balenciaga to a greater level of an awareness. Rich people cosplaying as poor, but still thinking they're better than them. Check. Making items solely for shock factor to build hype and brand awareness, but not really saying anything meaningful. Check. Taking all of Margiela's principles, but not in its true anti-industry, anti-conformist way, but in a how can we make a more monetizable version of this way. Check. Seeming to be very socially conscious, but choosing to profit from it rather than use your influence for the better. Check. Performative messaging is all over Demno's work. Every time he talks about climate change in his work, I roll my eyes. You work for a company that hosts up to seven shows a year in which multiple celebrities emit so much CO2 by coming to your shows in their private jets. Do you know how bad Kim Kardashian and Kanye West is the environment? Double as bad now that they're traveling separately. Balenciaga is rated as being a sustainable company. I'll give them that. But you're preaching the wrong message. The fashion industry produces so much pollution and damage to the environment. I think it would be so much more of a powerful message to approach. But that would affect the company's bottom line. And no, I don't think it's hypocritical for a fashion brand to discuss this topic. I think it would be the most effective way as this change needs to happen from the people inside the industry, not advocated for by people outside of it. You can create and enjoy fashion while also wanting to be environmentally conscious. It's just not as profitable. And why should Demna be the one to do it? Because he seems to have some sort of concern and awareness about the world and power imbalance, but not as much as he tries to show. A lot of Demna's creative ideas are pretty good. I thought that the recent broken iPhone show advice was a cool way to make something obsolete and discarded valuable again. A lot of Balenciaga's footwear is very innovative and there are obviously a lot of Balenciaga looks and pieces that I like. I think Demna is a talented designer and that is what a lot of people regard him highly for. And I still enjoy his work in that sense. But it's the messaging that's always been so hypocritical for me. In the end, what does Balenciaga and Demna really stand for? What are you buying into? Cool, trendy clothes that represent nothing? Any edge he had at Vetement left when he joined Balenciaga. How can you be so aware of the culture and mindset and reflect it in your work, but be so blissfully unaware that you're a huge part of the problem? I don't think you are being blissfully unaware. I just think you don't care. It doesn't make you any better than every other company that is equally as bad, but just doesn't acknowledge it. And in this way, the people who buy into his work are representative of his feelings. I'd hope that if you have the ability to see the problem, you'd want to do better. Maybe you are doing it behind the scenes and we don't know. And if that is the case, I take it all back. But for now, Demna, cool clothes, but to me, a bit of a sellout. This is all just my opinion, of course. I followed Demna along his career, and at one point he was an idol to me. I'm originally from Ukraine, so it was really nice to see a fashion designer from Eastern Europe that was making it big in the fashion industry, and it was cool and different. But I realized that I don't want to be like Demna. I don't want to go into fashion with this goal of reaching the status that he has working for an established fashion house. I want to be more like McQueen or Margiela and follow their philosophies, because I truly don't think there is a designer like them working today. Kiko is probably my favorite Eastern European designer, so at least I have one to look up to still. If you have any thoughts of any of the things I said, please let me know in the comments below. I'm not claiming to know any better than anyone else. These are just my thoughts and observations. I just wanted to share them. There are definitely ideas that I may have missed or info that I may have not have known. You can never really be fully prepared to make a video like this and know everything, but I tried. And I feel like there are people who agree with this perspective. I get that I may be very idealistic and harsh and overly critical, but you know, I'm done feeling hopeless about the world and masking it in irony. I'm also done making excuses for people if I don't agree with their decisions, especially celebrities that I don't know. And also, I can still like aspects about the person and dislike other aspects. I would say that I still like Demna more so than other designers. In fact, I like him a lot, which is why I expect better if, if that makes sense. You don't have to fully agree with me, but I hope you took something from this. Thank you. Like for like, so for so. Goodbye.